Last time on Sailing Solianus, we talked money. We're going to focus on how much it costs to actually buy the boat. We discussed our financial planning, how much the boat actually cost after often overlooked transaction fees, how much we spent on immediate upgrades, and the financial tools we developed to help us make decisions. If you haven't seen it, put a pin in it. It's a good one. Now let's get back to where we were on the boat. After saying goodbye to Chicago, we put the sails up one last time for a short 12 nautical mile trip to the mouth of the Calumet River. Here we began our 1300 mile journey down the inland river system from Lake Michigan to the Gulf of Mexico. Thing is, not all the bridges along the way are as tall as these, nor do they all open. Because of this, we have to take our mast down. Our first stop is just one mile downriver at Skyway Yacht Works, where we would have our mast unstepped. We just took all the sails off our boat. She looks so naked. Oh, our boat is naked. It is naked. It looks sad. Take the lazy jacks off last. Because if we take them off now, those pulleys are just gonna be banging around. Okay. Unstepping our mass was something we had never done. Not only were we unstepping our mast for the first time, we were also shipping our mast via truck down to Mobile, Alabama. So we had to understand the process for unstepping the mast and figuring out how to organize everything and where it all went and how it was all put together. And then we needed to figure out how to properly pack the mast for its thousand mile journey on a truck um, down to Alabama. So we wanted to protect the mast, protect the boom, protect the standing rigging, but we also had to catalog and organize how all of the running rigging went together so that we could put it all back together in three months time when we were reunited and became a sailboat again. The best way that we figured out how to do that was to take a ton of pictures. The furling unit on the head sail, all of the reefing lines on the boom and the main sail, all the rigging, like even down to which little pin went to in which direction what direction <laughs> and what cotter pin and like how it was everything we took photos of everything Has it taken what is best of us, this everything you do is always a little bit more scary the first time and since we never had our mast on stepped we just we didn't know how any of it would go you know what it would look like when it was coming out of the deck uh Hole. <laughs> Chalks. That was a big thing, was what to do with the chalks. We had no idea. We were supposed to get them out before the mast right, came out? Right, or did they or... come out with the mast yeah. through the top? Like, just every little question that you can imagine, we just, we didn't know how it would go. And it was quite windy that day. So we were cringing at every jolt and every dramatic movement of the mast. We're like, is everything okay? And at the same time, while we're being overly protective helicopter parents for our boat, the guys that are working here have done this a thousand times a season and are probably just, we're sick to death of us <laughs> by the end of it. Hold up! Yeah! Someone they go from the top here. We just need the fore and aft one. Okay. Yeah, we can try. Go for it. What's happening? Go ahead. moving the chalks. All right, so are we... I think we're good now. All right. All right. We're good. You got your going up? I got to grab it in a minute. Keep going up.
How did it go? I don't know, that was sketchy. It's blowing like 20 knots in here. I don't think we damaged anything. So that's a plus. <laughs> we got okay, there. Shipping your mast or are you carrying it? Shipping. I got all the instruments at the top of our mast. Wow. There's a hole in our boat, dear Kurt, dear Kurt. So after we had sorted the mast and rigging, it was time to pack up our sails and put them away for a few months. We were going to be turning our sailboat into a motorboat. Which is not what got us into all of this. <laughs> we really, truly love sailing. But with 19 foot air draft on bridges, there was no way that we could continue on down the river with our mast up. Yes? Back to smiling. Because I love you. So even though we were packing up our sails and we wouldn't be using them for the next two to three months, we were already thinking about what type of sails we would need once we got down to the Gulf and beyond. We talked a little bit in episode 21 about the struggles we've had with our big Genoa. Our only head sail is 155% Genoa. We reach hull speed at about 13 knots of wind and are quickly overpowered. It's old, it's blown out, and we are heading to the trade winds. So this sail has been sort of a big source of anxiety when the winds are up for us because we know that it's not the right sail to have. In any case, we need a new head sail. We need a new head sail. So as with any project, we start researching. The first place we started was the Tartan 37 Owners Forum. I wanted to see what other people who had sailed our boat in the places that we were headed to had done for their head sail. There was a pretty good consensus around 110, 115%. So once we figured out the type of sail that we wanted, we had to figure out who we wanted to make it. So we asked all of you guys. We created a poll on our YouTube channel. We turned to our patrons and posted questions on our Facebook page. And we got a ton of recommendations. North Sales and Quantum and Doyle, Precision Sales, Max Sales, Evolution Sales. Literally, we probably contacted between 15 and 20 different sale offs. And we got a total of three quotes. I guess it shouldn't have come as such a big surprise that it was so hard to get anyone to talk to us. <laughs> Because that just seems like how it is in the marine industry. You try to get someone to do a job, and man, it is like pulling it teeth. It is. And it was kind of crazy because we had a bunch of referrals from people who already had sales made from all of these lofts. Right, and, and we were name like, dropped. Yeah, make sure to mention my name. So-and-so will take care of you. And we're like, oh, sweet. This is going to be great. We contact so-and-so, and then radio silence or that person did get back to us and said we'll get well, in touch shortly and yeah. then we just and don't then hear from nothing people. so anyway the few people that we did talk with we learned a great deal from and we realized there are way more options when ordering a sale than just figuring out how big your sale should be mm. do we want dacron or a laminate what are warp and fill fibers uv protection is important but is it just the sacrificial cloth on the outside or are there differences in the, all of the different cloths that the sale is made out of what about a rope or foam luff do we want cross cut or triradial sails i don't know <laughs> <laughs> these are all the things that we had to figure out before we could order a sale. That's the thing that Kirk really dove deep into and we're going to talk about that a little bit in the future because Kirk could talk for like 15 minutes about sail cloth. <laughs> out of all the sail offs that we talked with, precision sails and max sails kind of stood out above the rest. Precision's response time blew everyone else out of the water. It felt like we weren't actually dealing with any sort of marine company. <laughs> we felt like we were dealing with a regular company. <laughs> <laughs> we had a really fantastic phone call with Travis at Max Sales. He probably spent about 20 minutes chatting with us about different sail cloths and the sail making process and how they're unique in that they are one of the last sail offs that makes all of their sails in house in the USA. And they're highly rated amongst cruising sailors for building tough, long-lasting cruising sails. But at the end of the day, we really decided that we wanted a tri-radial sail. 
there's two things that stopped us from going with Max Sales. One was they say they only make sailcloth with Challenge Marblehead, which is not an ideal cloth for triradial sales. And when I sent him back emails asking him questions, we didn't get a response. We turned to Precision Sales and they answered all of our questions. Of the three sale offs that we got quotes back from, they were by far the cheapest. And they were also the only place that felt like they really wanted to make us a sale. <laughs> We really valued that. Their quote was the most detailed out of the three quotes that we received. There was a ton of information and options to choose from, and it included a follow-up offering for a free design consultation over the phone. If any of you are interested in a sale, they are having a Black Friday sale at the end of this month. And while it's kind of strange to be focusing so much on sales as we're converting our sailboat into, into a, a motorboat, motorboat for the next three months, we are really stoked to be setting ourselves up for trade wind sailing with an appropriately sized, newly upgraded head sail for the future. <laughs> I think I strained a muscle putting it on my shoulder. Oh no. Before firing up that engine and droning on for the next 1300 miles. <laughs> we still had a mass to pack. I come home again at the end of a lonesome day And when I listen closely all the voices seem to say that I still think of you While I watch the clock go round and round I saw the news today What a rodeo A grown-up man thought it was another little boy <laughs> After two full days of unstepping the mast, packing it up, packing up all the sails, and putting the boat back together again, it was a relief to finally be on the river. There's some cool shit behind you. I don't know. We only had a few miles to go that night because we had left Skyway Outworks pretty late. We went through our first lock, which was scary because we had no idea what to expect. Fortunately, it was just a four foot lock and it really wasn't a big deal. <laughs> <It's> nothing. <laughs> we only had a couple hundred feet to get to the marina where we were gonna stay at and disaster struck. Next time on Sailing Solianus. <laughs> Find out why we didn't make it to the dock. Next time on Sailing Solianus. We are total noobs. <laughs> Next time on Sailing Solianus. Heading back to the yard that you just came from to get hauled out. Next time on Sailing Solianus. How to run aground in eight foot of water when you only draft four. Oh, that's the best one. <laughs> <laughs> Next time on Sailing Solianus. We travel five miles in seven days. <laughs> you can't laugh right away though. <laughs> this isn't funny.